man, he should have just made an excuse or called in sick or something. Instead, he decided to face the music, literally. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Justin Alexander, and welcome to another installment of Ship Life Stories, where I tell you about some crazy wild adventures that happened during my contracts aboard cruise ships. In today's installment, I'm gonna be telling you guys about how my friend Trey was fired for being intoxicated during a show. He was actually a cast member in the show that I was doing on the ship. That day, he was just doing a separate show. Now, Trey wasn't really the, the brightest guy at times, but this was common sense in my opinion, which I'll tell you guys all about. He got fired for being drunk after day drinking on a private island that my cruise line owns. We're gonna go ahead and get straight into it. By the way, before I get too far into this story, just so you guys are aware, obviously most of my videos are going to involve people being drunk and fired. I'm sure you're wondering why. You see, when you got basically a giant floating hotel that people are going on vacation on, these things kind of go hand in hand. A lot of very large companies own these ships. So of course, in a big company where you got potentially thousands upon thousands of employees, these things are gonna happen. Now on a ship as well, there is limitations on what you can do, especially when you've been on that same location for about six months. Everybody's drinking, everybody's turning up. So of course, the drinking and the firing, I think are going hand in hand. Just so you guys are aware, just a little disclaimer for you. Now, without further ado, let's get into the episode. Personality wise, my boy Trey was a pretty cool and collected type of guy. Him and I got along fairly well, even though we were somewhat opposite of each other. I like to go out, he liked to sit in his cabin and read a book. Now, him and I had a pretty decent love, a mutual love for 90s cartoons, <laughs> movies, and videos. I think everybody should, to be honest, but hey, teach his own. But, uh, you know, Trey, he never really went out too often. And it just happened to be on this one odd chance that he did go out on this island that things just did not work out in his favor. Which honestly, again, just like my last episode, another rookie mistake, but then again, it was his first contract being on a tour or a ship contract, something of this nature. So some things unfortunately are unavoidable. There's always a lesson to be learned in life and you can only hope and pray that that lesson doesn't have too big of a consequence, right? Now this is kind of a no brainer, but there is an unspoken rule on the ship and it's that you never, and I mean never, go drinking before your shift at work. Never. So when you're out on the ocean as a seafarer, 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 that's the technical term for what a worker out on the ocean is. When you're on a contract as a seafarer, if there is an injury, if there is an incident, if there is somebody acting weird while working, they will automatically, and I mean automatically, if they're injured, whatever, you were automatically sent to medical to be breathalyzed, either medical or security, depending on the situation that went down, all right? You will always be breathalyzed, so obviously you don't wanna drink because it could be a lot of problems for you, potential problems for you later on. So again, never drink before a shift. So my cruise line owns this little island just off the coast of the Bahamas called GSC, which stands for Great Stirrup K or something like that, some weird name. And uh, you know, we own this island and it's exclusively to the cruise line. So we would go there during the day, right before we went to the Bahamas for the guests to have some kind of like, I guess, privacy, feel exclusive. You know, on this island, it, uh, basically what would happen is the cruise line would take all the spa staff, they take the, the drinks, they take all the activities and they basically plop it on this island for people to hang out and have a good time all day. Now, I've told you guys before in previous videos, I was an entertainer. I did a show, a Broadway show on the ship, and I had a little bit more free time than most of the crew. I only worked like two days a week, and I had almost guaranteed every island, every single port off. So, you know, obviously that gave me the freedom, and myself, along with the rest of my cast, the, the people that I performed with, it gave them the opportunity to go out and have some fun. 
Now, most of us, for the most part, you know, we just kind of went with the assumption and with the opinions of everybody else that GSC was never a good island to go off at. They said, you know, it was just packed with guests on this tiny little island and there wasn't much to do but pay for drinks. And we weren't really down for that. Last thing we wanted to do was be around, you know, sardine with a bunch of, of guests along with the, the people that we work with, the rest of the crew, because they knew who we were. But you know, this one particular day, we decided to to you know get off the ship and go hang out at GSC, which again, unfortunately, didn't work out for one of us. So if, if I remember correctly, it was me and Trey, some of my castmates, my friend Lisa. If you guys don't know who Lisa is, she was a good friend of mine on the ship. Uh, she was a massage therapist. I did a video with her. I'll leave a link above if you guys want to see it talking about the the life of a spa worker but anyway so we all got off the ship and we went to this island we had to take a little tinder boat to the island and uh you know it turned out to be a pretty dope spot you know before we knew it we were kicking back pina coladas like it was nothing and that's when the trouble happened you see we had hours and i mean hours now trey unfortunately he had a show that day so in my show that I did on the show, uh, I mean on the ship after midnight, we only had two days a week. But the other singers on the ship had a, a, other, a, a separate show called SHP, which was, I think it was Soulful Hits production or something like that, where all the singers had to go perform in another venue on the ship. So Trey had this show, but he figured that he could, I don't know, sober up before it was time. So of course, you know, we were out there doing the thing. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was in there, you know, trying to dance and, and do what I did, you know, but at the end of the day, I didn't have a show that day. For those of you guys that aren't aware, while working on the ship, if you are out in port, there are two different call times. There is an all aboard time for everyone, which means the guests, and there is a crew all aboard time, which is when the guests, like myself, have to be back on board. Our all aboard time that day for the crew was 4.30, all right? It was 4.30 for us, and I believe my friend Trey just happened to have a show at five. So for whatever reason, he decided to stay with us, turning up, drinking until about four o'clock. And next thing you know, we look at the time, and all, now all of a sudden he's frantically trying to get back to the, the ship, which it takes a while because again, we had to uh, tender, which means we had a boat, a smaller boat take us to the island. So you had to get back on that smaller boat, which you had to wait in the line for, to get back to the ship. So he waited till, I mean, the last possible second to get back to this boat. He barely, all of us, including, we were all in the same boat back, the same tender boat back to the, the ship. And uh, we made it back, I, I believe it was like 425, something like that, we just made it. And you can get in a lot of trouble for uh, for being late. You know, you can get punishments like even having it at one point, I remember one guy, he had his privileges taken away. He wasn't allowed to get off the ship at all, which is torture. But anyway, um, so he frantically ran to his room, showered, got dressed, went to the show. You know, and me thinking, you know, me, Lisa, and the rest of my cast, we're like, you know what? He is turned, I'm telling you, this guy, I don't know how he even made it past security. This dude was stumbling and yelling and being obnoxious. He was. He was one of those obnoxious, obnoxious drunks. And uh, you know, we wanted to see how it would play out. You know, at that point in time, like I tried to stop him while we were on the island. You know, kinda, I'm not gonna lie. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're all adults. You know, I tried to warn him, but you know, he wasn't listening. So I wanted to see how it played out. I was like, yo, this man is turned. Let me go see how this unfolds, how it plays out. So that's what we did. We went to go see the show, SHP. All right, so me and my crew, we, you know, we shower, we get dressed and stuff. And we get to the venue probably, I think it was like five minutes prior to the show starting. Now, in entertainment world, arriving on time is not like a thing. You're not allowed to because we have five minutes, uh, we have like 20 minute calls, we have 10 minutes, we have five, which is places. All right, you have to be in your place ready to go for the show so that everybody's accounted for because there's sound checks, there's a lot of moving parts that happen prior to a show starting. So this is five minutes, right? Everybody's at places except for Trey. He's nowhere to be found. You know, um, and it just so happened that my my 
stage manager for the show that I was doing happened to be there. And awkwardly, there was a, a decent amount of security there as well. I don't know why. They weren't there for any specific reason, but every now and then security had some free time, so they would show up to a couple of the shows, including my show. Now, the thing with that was there were a lot of eyes on this show for that particular day, which is not a good thing for my friend Trey, which didn't turn out to work out for him at all. So this is five minutes going on, and now it's time for the show. Trey is not there, he's gone, you know? And my stage manager is freaking out because it's not his show, but he's still kind of responsible for everybody that's involved in my cast of the show that I was doing because this is basically just an extension of my show that I was doing on the ship. And uh, you know, everybody's trying to figure out where he is, blah, blah, blah. This guy, I kid you not, he showed up like 10 minutes after the show was supposed to start. So he comes in and he is, again, still being ridiculously obnoxious. And you know, he's all like, I'm here, I'm here, it's me. You know, this man thought he was like the the, the diva of, of the night, you know, he, he made a, a big scene. You know, of course, all the guests were laughing, a lot of the spectators were laughing, you know. Now, me and even my, uh, my, my stage manager at the time, Jack, we were all like, oh man, like something wrong. I knew what was wrong, but my stage manager, Jack, he had no idea what was going on. Now, um, the show started and it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that this was not going to go as planned. Now this show is called Soulful Hits. And I'm gonna tell y'all right now, there was nothing soulful about what this man was doing. I'm telling you, I'm not even, I'm not even, you know, musically trained, you know, I have no idea what high pitch, low pitch, but when I tell you this man was off, I could have done a better job than him, and I, trust me, you, you don't want to hear me sing whatsoever, it, it wouldn't be good, you guys would probably throw your phone or set it on fire or something like that if I started singing. Now, this guy was, he, he continued to, to perform, you know, and it just got worse and worse as time went on. So, you know, in, in, in entertainment world, when we're doing a show, there's places that you have to be throughout the show. It's called blocking. This man just completely disregarded his blocking and it threw everybody else off. There were about four other singers in that show that day and he was just messing up. He was all over the place. This guy is, is blatantly like on the microphone saying that he doesn't know the words. And, and then what got worse was that he tried to put the mic in the guest faces. He was like, oh, come on, you know the words, blah, blah, blah. You know, he did this again after again and again, time after time. Now, th for this show and this venue, this was like considered to be like a high caliber, five star type deal. And the guests were dining, it was a dining experience. So you got dudes over here, you know, trying to eat and enjoy their food. And next thing you know, you got this guy over here talking about some, come on, you know the words, sing it. You know, and, and obviously, you know, some of the, the guests were getting a little irritated, which on a cruise line, or I'm sure you guys know any kind of industry or where you're in customer service, disrupting the guests, especially in a situation like that, is a big no-no, you, you can't do it. So obviously, you know, security and, and my stage manager, Jack, you know, it was, you know, it, it got bad because everybody knew what was up. They knew something was wrong. So, in the middle of all of it, Jack kind of went around to to get you know Trey's attention to tell me, say, hey, come here, you know, like come here, come here, come here, come here. Because he didn't want to see him get fired. He knew what was going down. He knew what the next step was. Um, it was a two-part show. There was a little break in between. Alright, so uh, Jack, he had Trey and he told him straight up, him and I think it was the, the other assistant stage manager, Emily, she happened to be here at the time. Jack said, look, um, bro, uh, you know, we've all been out here. If, if, if you're drunk or something's wrong, go go to your room, we'll make an excuse, you know? Honestly, which everybody knew, if you felt to the point where you were that drunk, and this is for everybody that's, that's aspiring to work on the ship or does work on the ship, if you are intoxicated, just you're better off missing a shift. Call in, say you're sick, say you threw up, say you got GI, if you guys don't know what GI is, I made a video, I'll put it up above. Say you got GI, say whatever to, to not go in that shift because you could potentially get fired if someone suspects, suspects you of, of being drunk, all right? Now, here's where things got bad, and this is what kind of ruined it all for him. 
Now, my boy Jack, the stage manager, he was the homie. He had, I think it was like 15 years in the game. He had been on ship, so he had seen it all. Now, he went over to Trey with the intention of helping him. He didn't want him to get fired his first year of working on cruise ships and potentially damage his career, at least in working in this kind of industry. So Jack was doing his best and said, look, if you're, you're, you're drunk, let me know. I can get you out of here. And Trey just exploded. Like this man got angry. Of course, you know, you, you, I'm sure you guys have met your 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 sorts of, of angry drunks. You know, it's like, it's one of those things. Like if you never really drink with somebody, you don't know if somebody's an angry drunk until you find out that they're an angry drunk. It's, it's crazy to see sometimes. And you know, now, Trey wasn't that guy that starts throwing punches or anything like that. It's not like my last video last week, but he did cause a scene. Now, he was one of those, those drama types, thespian type deal, you know? It was like still fresh out of a movie. Now, Jack said, here, I can take you to your room if you're drunk, just what to say you're feeling sick. And, you know, he tried to kind of, you know, pull him in the right direction. And immediately Trey said, don't put your hands on me. I'm, I'm appalled. I'm shocked. I feel so disrespected that you would even, you know, accuse me of being drunk and blah, blah, blah. And this man went on and on and he calls a scene at the, at the venue in front of everybody. So of course, after that, I'm sure you guys know, um, it didn't really get any much better from there. So for whatever reason, they still decided to let him perform. And I think what, what kind of ruined it was when he fell, he actually stumbled over while he was, you know, doing some of his blocking, like going over from one part of the stage to the next and he fell over. At that point in time, it was solidified. Everybody there knew that he was drunk, including the guests. So, you know, at, at the first chance and opportunity, Jack and along alongside the uh, security, they just kind of, you know, signaled for him to come here. You know, so he came over and they took him to security. Lo and behold, sure enough, he was breathalyzed. And now given, I didn't see all this, but you know, I found out later and this obviously it just kind of makes sense. He was breathalyzed and then we didn't see him for a couple days, really. Um, we were wondering what happened to him, which we found out later. Of course, he was fired. And if you guys don't know, when you get fired and you still got like a couple days left in port, you're not really allowed to go anywhere. Basically, he was uh, kind of locked in his, in his cabin by security until, you know, we got back to New York, which was our home port. So he got fired and we didn't see him that one time. We didn't even get to say goodbye to the guy. He was gone, poof, disappeared on the ship. And uh, you know, food was brought to him and, and I think he didn't smoke, so he, he wasn't allowed to go, go have a cigarette or anything like that. He was pretty much just kind of like locked into his room until we got back to New York City. But yeah, so that, that's pretty much what went down. He got fired for being drunk and performing, which goes hand in hand. You can't be drunk and work and blah, blah, blah. All right, moral of the story for today, guys, don't drink and work. It just won't work out in your favor if you're working on cruise ships. Now, anyway, guys, I want to wrap this one up. I know this story was a little bit longer than expected, but I like to give you guys as much details as I can. Anyway, if you guys found this video enjoyable and if you guys want more, please make sure you hit that like button and make sure you guys subscribe as well. I greatly appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment about this story. Let me know if you guys have any crazy ship stories or anything like that, stuff that you've seen while on the ship. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comments below as well or contact me in my email, which I'll leave in the description below. Hope you guys enjoy. I will see you next Sunday. Until then, you guys relax and take it easy.